today's notes, we're going to take a look at the arcs and chords of a circle. At the top of the page, I just wanted to review that the measure of a central angle, so the vertex is at the center of the circle, so angle A, C, B, that angle measure is equal to the measure of the arc that it intercepts. So that's equivalent to the measure of arc AB. Now that's in terms of degrees. Last class we had taken a look at the measure of an arc or the length of an arc in terms of a linear unit and that's when you're dealing with circumference. You can also measure, in this case, I want the measurement of arc AB in terms of degrees. And in your reading, you learn that a minor arc is an arc that is measured, that's measurement is less than 180 degrees, where a major arc has a measurement that's greater than 180 degrees. So we need to be very careful in terms of how we're naming arcs. So we have minor arc AB, but then they add a letter Z on the circle to refer to this larger arc. That Z tells us what direction around the circle that we're looking at. So let's take a look at example number one. So we have circle F, and we need to find the measure of each of the following arcs. So arc BC is our first arc. Well, within the picture, we have a diameter AF, which this angle along a straight line is 180 degrees. If I know one of the angles already is 90, the other is 40, that means this angle here is 50 degrees. And since the central angle is equivalent to the arc, I know that that arc measure is 50 degrees as well. Changing colors, looking for the measure of arc C to D to E. That goes along with angle E, F, C. I know part of the angle is 90, and I also have within the picture two intersecting diameters and given this vertical angle of 40, I know that it, the other vertical angle is also 40 because all vertical angles are congruent. Therefore, from here, C to E, 90 plus 40 is 130 degrees. Last but not least, BAE. So let's grab the red. B to A to E is this half of this diameter here. So again, since a straight angle is 180 degrees, this arc is also going to be 180 degrees. So the measure of arc BAE is 180 degrees, and that's a semicircle. Okay, so let's fill in this table here. We have a variety of theorems with arcs and chords of a circle. So starting in the top left-hand corner, it says that the measure of arc BA, so if arc BA is equal to the measure of arc CD, then I know, I'm going to put a 1 and a 2 here, that these two central angles are going to be equal or congruent. So the measure of angle 1 is equal to the measure of angle 2. Moving to the right, it says that if the measure of B, E, A, that angle is equal to the measure of C, E, D, yes, I know that the respective arcs are congruent, but I can also state that these chords within those arcs are also congruent. So the length of BA is going to be equal to the length of CD in looking at the chords. Last box in the top row there, it says if I know that the chords are congruent, so chord AB is congruent to CD, I can conclude that both the arcs and the central angles are congruent. So then I know that arc AB that measure is equal to arc CD.
Okay, in the bottom row, it says if length AB is equal to length CD, so I have some congruent chords. So here are chords of the circle. I know their lengths are equal, that they are congruent. That tells me that this distance, F to E and G to E, that distance is the same. And that's the distance to the center, E. So if AB is equal to CD, then the chords are equidistant from the center of the circle. So that means EF equals length EG. So if the chords are the same length, then they must be the same distance from the center. The next one, if radius AB is perpendicular to the chord, now it could also be the radius, but you can extend the radius to get the diameter. So it could be the diameter or radius, but if either are perpendicular to a chord, then it's going to bisect the chord. So C, let's call this A, B, C, D. C, E is congruent to D, E. A, B, bisects C, D. So EC is equal to ED. Some other relationships to note in this picture, not only does it bisect the chord, but the arc that intercepts the chord is also bisected. So arc BD is congruent to arc BC. And also, in looking at the rest of the semicircle, let's put in F here, arc FC would also be congruent to arc, if I can trace, FD. And because of the two radii right here, these segments are also going to be congruent as they are drawn from the center to the outside of the circle. So we end up with an isosceles triangle in there. We know that an isosceles triangle this altitude is also the median and angle bisector. Last but not least, if I had two parallel chords, now parallel chords, in order to be parallel, any segments to be parallel, they must be equidistant. So they have to be the same distance apart. So therefore, these arcs that are included between the two parallel chords are going to be congruent. So the measure of arc AC is equal to the measure of arc BD. All right, example number two. It says that arc HD is congruent to arc JK. Find the measure of angle HLG. So HLG is here, and arc HD is congruent to JK. So if arc JK measures 82 degrees, then arc HG measures 82 degrees, and these two central angles are going to be congruent and also equal to 82 degrees. So the measure of angle HLG is 82 degrees. Number three, PT bisects angle RPS, find length RT. So PT bisects RPS, so this angle is congruent to that angle. And since those two central angles are congruent, I know that the arcs they intercept are congruent. So I know that RT is congruent to TS. 6X equal to 20 minus 4X. Add the 4X, we get 10X equals 20. X equals 2. And 6 times 2 is 12. So length RT is equal to 12. Number 4. It says that chord JK is congruent to chord LM and that the arcs that they intercept, so this arc goes from here all the way over here, which is really 5Y, 
And then the other arc that's intercepted by LM, let's use a different color, goes from here over, which would be Y plus 68. Since the chords are congruent, then the arcs that they intercept are congruent. So 5y is equal to 68 plus y. So we end up with 4y equals 68. y is equal to 17. Find the measure of arc jk. So then 5 times 17, the measure of arc jk is equal to 85 degrees. Number five, we have radius AE perpendicular to chord BD. So as it's drawn, if it's perpendicular, it bisects. So BC is congruent to DC. I need to find the length of BD, which is the length of the whole chord. Within that picture, I'm given the length of radius A to E, which is five, if I add the three and the two together. So I'm going to draw another radius right here from A to D. So that means the length AD is 5. And within this picture, I have a right triangle as this supplement is also 90 degrees. And that's the 3, 4, 5 Pythagorean triple. So if C to D is 4, C to B is 4, giving me a length 4 plus 4 all the way across of 8. Six and seven. Well, let's take a look at seven first, as I'll uh, minimize my Promethean palette there. So it says if AD is parallel to BC, find the value of X. And we know parallel lines are equidistant, so arc CD is congruent to arc AB. So 2X minus 20, their measures are equal. Subtract the X, add the 20, we get X equals 40. All right, number six. In that picture, we're told that length AB is equal to length CD, so the chords are congruent. E to O is 2X, and F to O is 5X minus 9. Find X and EO in part B. We're given that CD is 32, and EO is equal to FO, which are both equal to 12. Find A, B, B, E, and the radius of circle O. So in part A, let's do that in purple. This statement here, A, B is equal to C, D, which is 16, that's telling me that the chords themselves are congruent. And if the chords are congruent, then they're the same distance from the center. So this point here, O to the center, that means that E to O is equal in length to O to F. So given the length E to O is 2X, I set that equal to FO, which is 5X minus 9. Subtract the uh, 5X, we get negative 3X equals negative 9. Divide by negative 3, and X equals 3. So find X, so X is 3, and then E O, which is 2X, 2 times 3, EO is going to be 6. Now let's switch colors for part B. So given that we have, again, we're trying to find ABBE in the radius of the circle. Well, since the radius is perpendicular to the chord, I know that it bisects it. So if um, the lengths from the center are the same, which is both 12. I know that the same distance from the center that the chords must be congruent. So if CD is 32, AB is 32, with each segment, as this would be a midpoint, since it um, always is a bisector, A to E and B to E are both 16. Fine length AB and BE, so those lengths are um, 32 and 16. AB 32, BE 16, and the radius of the circle. 
I'm going to draw, again, using one of these right triangles here, draw the radius from O to B so I can use Pythagorean theorem. And OB, the radius is equal to, it's the hypotenuse, the sum of 12 squared and 16 squared. 144 and 16 squared, which is 256, 225, 256, we get a sum of 400. And the square root of 400 is 20. So the length of my radius, since OB was a radius, that would be the same length as O to A. We have another congruent triangle. O to C, O to D, or any other radius of the circle would be 20 units.